So uh, you are live now. Good to go. Uh, good evening to all. On behalf of Intas Pharmaceutical Limited, I, Dr. Dinesh Pranami from Medical Affairs Team, would like to welcome you to the live webinar program. Now we know that currently the entire medical fraternity is navigating through uncertain times, uh, trying to understand and solve this puzzle of COVID-19. And COVID-19 has impacted the clinical practice of all the specialty, and so there is a significant impact on the GI disease management as well. And it is important and it is critical that uh, we understand this uh, impact on the GI practice uh, in a simplified manner. And uh, uh, and we and but right now what we are having is that we are surrounded by mountains of information. Uh, and and for that we have started this series of webinar uh, where we can provide you the updated updated knowledge regarding all the aspect of uh, GI practice. Uh, and this is the second edition of the series that we have started. Uh, uh, which is the new era in the therapeutic GI endoscopy. Uh, in, in this today's uh, webinar, we are going to talk about the therapeutic and uh, diagnostic uh, SPY cholangioscopy. And um, we have with us uh, uh, two renowned endocrinologists, uh, Dr. Mukesh Kalla and Dr. Pankaj Srimal. Uh, and uh, to moderate today's session, we have with us uh, a very senior uh, gastroenterologist, uh, uh, that is uh, Dr. Professor and Head of uh, Department of Gastro Gastroenterologist, uh, Dr. Ramesh Rup Rai. Uh, he was the uh, Professor and Head of the Department of Gastroenterology at SMS Medical College and was the President of uh, Indian Society of Gastroenterology from 2007 to 2008. Uh, I would like to request all the viewers that uh, during the entire presentation, uh, uh, you have an opportunity to ask the question to uh, our renowned uh, speakers and uh, you can write your question in the comment box. The comment box is visible on the right side of the video that is playing. So uh, uh, with this brief introduction now, I would like to hand over uh, to uh, Dr. Ramesh uh, Ruprai uh, to please begin the session, sir. So over to you, sir. Good evening, all colleagues who are attending this second edition of a very important uh, a topic that is the therapeutic and diagnostic uh, spy cholangioscopy. Uh, we have all been reading about Sherlock Holmes and the way he used to identify and try to find out uh, what is the, that clue. And we were really uh, quite blind and we were, uh, uh, we were concentrating only on the radiological images in trying to distinguish between a malignant and a uh, benign disease and taking some of the uh, biopsies, some smears, and trying to distinguish them with the imaging. But the time came when we were becoming wiser, and the wiseness came with spy cholangioscopes. With a small hole, you can enter the bile duct and see the whole bile duct, the mucosa. And now with the advent of some uh, ultrasound uh, catheters, you can even try to see the wall also very well. So you, you have so many things to offer in these group of patients. Large stones, you can do some therapeutic procedures. You can do a try to find out whether it is a malignant or benign disease. You can know which direction you have to go and the direction can also be decided. So today we have uh, Dr. Mukesh Kalla and Dr. Pankaj uh, who are going to take us the journey of how this development took place. And uh, uh, first, uh, Dr. Pankaj is going to talk to us about uh, the whole history as to how it has developed and what is the need for doing, uh, uh, doing this type of diagnostic and then a therapeutic procedure. And Dr. Mukesh Kala is going to take us through the uh, whole process as to how should we achieve the diagnosis and how therapeutics can be applied and we can make a surgical role of ourselves. Over to you, Pankaj, to take us through the journey of cholangioscopy. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Mukesh Kala, can you show up the slides? Start yeah. the presentation. Yes. Uh, share your slides so that we can start. So, uh, a very good evening to uh, all the viewers. We had a very wonderful uh, first talk in this series of uh, every week uh, uh, talks on the latest technology in uh, uh, endoscopy era and uh, 
Today's talk is about uh, spy cholangioscopy. Uh, am I audible to all? You are audible, but I am not able to open the slide. Okay. So maybe just you can search down. You will see the option of share screen, and then uh, you have to share the screen presentation. No, no, I am not able to get the presentation. Thank you. Pankaj, uh, sir, uh, presentation is your in your uh, bottom side. Like bottom. you know, you have opened that presentation, right? So minimize. You have minimized that presentation in MacBook. You will find in in the uh, bottom, right hand side bottom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, sir, you just need to open the presentation. We can see your desktop right now. Okay, sir. Presentation left hand side, red button. Presentation. It's already open, sir. Red, red button. There is an icon of PPT on the on the left side. You can see the PowerPoint icon. Yeah. Is is this okay now? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So okay, then we will start off the topic today. Uh, therapeutic and uh, diagnostic uh, spike cholangioscopy. So you can go to the next slide, sir. Yeah. So there was a famous quote by uh, William Osler: "The value of experience is not in seeing much, but in seeing wisely." So this rightly matches uh, with our topic today. We are going to elaborate and discuss about the spike cholangioscopy. Uh, the importance is to see wisely and make a good diagnosis and give a patient good therapeutic outcome by doing an advanced procedure. Go to the next slide, sir. So spike, if you see a dictionary, it means uh, to secretly obtain information. So now that is not a secret. Uh, we are going to share every uh, secret with you people. uh next slide so now see this uh, cholangiogram doing a ercp you can see a good cholangiogram with a stricture at the right hepatic duct and you can see the clips in c2 which suggests that the patient has undergone cholestectomy so there is a post coli biliary stricture now the issue is in uh, whether the stricture is a benign or a malignant this is very important we keep on taking uh, uh, breast cytologies we are not able to make a diagnosis so if you are able to see clearly the stricture area and take targeted biopsies that is going to change the management in this patients next slide so this is another case you see a cholangiogram is showing a very large cbd stone and with the narrowing of the lower cbd so now what to do with this patient so earlier uh, before the invention of like ercp or even a spike cholangioscopy these patients used to go for a surgery laparotomy and uh, open cbd exploration just click on the next button sir this was a usual case then later on the came uh, the era of laparoscopic cbd exploration but they are all surgical procedures and now in this era we can uh, uh, treat these patients in a endoscopy room without the patients going for laparotomy or even a laparoscopy and uh, we can clear the cbd of these stones and the patient may have very good uh, therapeutic benefit and same day the patient goes home next slide so in all these cases in difficult situations whether to diagnose a case of biliary stricture or stone disease and many more to do spike cholangioscopy gives us the answer which way to go next so what are the methods available for evaluation of pancreatic and biliary diseases there are non invasive methods like ultrasound trans abdominal ultrasound ct scan mrcp these are all non invasive and invasive uh, investigations are doing endoscopic ultrasound ercp and cholangioscopy so they are not invasive practically uh, but overall minimally invasive endoscopic interventions we can say so in non invasive we can't get a tissue diagnosis we can get a good imaging we can see the morphology of the stricture we can localize the part but obviously to take a, a final decision for therapeutics we have to have a good tissue diagnosis so there is a high incidence of benign pathology 
uh, patients they are going for hepatic resections for suspected malignant uh, strictures and sometimes if it is a malignant the patient may have a delay in surgery if you don't get a tissue diagnosis so cholangioscopy gives us answer to see inside the pancreatic and biliary duct and find out the pathologies and treat them next slide so endoscopic ultrasound it can characterize the mass lesions uh, we can see the thickening or the lymph nodes they are helpful in lymph node status uh, showing uh, staging of the malignancy you, you can have fnac for tissue diagnosis and recently now we have therapeutic endoscopic ultrasound in patients of malignant uh, uh, causes causing uh, obstructive jaundice or gastric arterial obstruction and we can go for hepatogastrostomy or cholecystodiagnostomy next slide but uh, ercp it remains uh, the main diagnostic and therapeutic tool for all pd and uh, pancreatic diseases uh, which has been there since decades and we see the images and the decision making is done on fluoroscopy images uh, if there is a stricture we can take uh, uh, biopsies and the fluoroscopy we can take breast cytologies but again the accuracy of the cytological samples remains unsatisfactory till uh, this point of time and many cases of biliary stones are there uh, depending upon the anatomy of the bile duct or the size of the stones they can't be resolved even by doing a endoscopic papillary large balloon dilatation or doing a mechanical lithotripsy and there comes the role of advanced procedures like uh, cholangioscopy so this is a slide showing the sensitivity and specificity specificity of uh, making a diagnosis of malignant strictures on different modalities and we can see that the sensitivity is very good for us guided fnac but uh, ercp and breast cytology is only 13 to 46% and if you do biopsy it is 36 to 43% at the most next slide so there comes the role of uh, spy cholangioscopy the ability to see inside the bile duct or pancreatic duct take targeted biopsies make a good diagnosis early diagnosis and then plan treatment there are initial reports of uh, doing a cholangioscopy uh, in 1970s uh, there we, we used uh, mother baby cholangioscopes then there was a era of uh, spy cholangioscopy the first system which was launched in 2007 it was a legacy system by boston and then in 2015 they launched a digital uh, version of the same spy cholangioscope which has improved uh, better visualization and uh, we can have uh, image enhanced uh, uh, endoscopic images of uh, pancreatic and bile duct by using this uh, digital uh, spy cholangioscope next slide so uh, how they uh, differ in all the uh, sampling techniques uh, the cytology by doing a ercp doing a ercp biopsy and uh, doing a direct visualization biopsy with a spy cholangioscope you can see the sensitivity is significantly high it's about 76.5% for biopsy taken under vision with the help of cholangioscope as compared to cytology and ercp guided biopsy which are done under fluoroscopy next slide so now we have seen uh, the cholangioscopes have evolved uh, uh, since last uh, four decades uh, since the introduction of mother baby cholangioscope in 1970s so right now we have like three types of cholangioscope one is a dual operator uh, mother baby cholangioscope which is the oldest one uh, initially it was like fiber optic the image quality was low and then later on uh, we had video systems video cholangioscope which gave better uh, visualization then uh, direct peroral cholangioscope this is uh, basically a ultra slim endoscope like a nasal endoscope the diameter is about uh, 5.5 mm this is passed over a guide wire and then uh, uh, a five french catheter over which the scope is introduced directly into the bile duct and uh, then the therapeutics or uh, diagnosis tissue diagnosis is done and the most recent one is the spiral operator cholangioscope which is basically a catheter system cholangioscope we use a 10 french catheter uh, uh, size uh, uh, which is a cholangioscope initially it was uh, fiber optic images but as the technology evolved we have uh, recent ones are showing uh, digital images this is a digital uh, cholangioscope system by boston next slide so now uh, this was the picture showing uh, the use of dual operator mother baby cholangioscope you can see 
uh, it requires two operators and two cholangioscopes, uh, two endoscopes are there. One is a large therapeutic duodenoscope, while the other one is a uh, uh, fribal and it has its own uh, uh, endoscopic system along with the uh, processor, and uh, which is passed through the instrument channel by the other operator. And then you can go inside the bile duct. So the image quality is obviously good. Uh, there can be advantage of NBI, but it is a costly thing. Uh, it is very fragile and gets easily damaged. Good, requires a very good and large sphincterotomy. And uh, you can see as compared to the recent uh, spy cholangioscopes, you have only two deflections up and down only. So you can't have a four-way deflection uh, with this kind of uh, cholangioscopes. Next is next slide. So this is the direct per oral cholangioscope. So this is ultra slim endoscope basically. Uh, first a guide wire is introduced inside the bile duct over which you pass a five French catheter. At the distal end, you have a balloon which you get inflated inside the intrahepatic bile ducts and it acts as an anchor and over which you pass the scope. Uh, by that you go inside the bile duct and uh, get the uh, diagnosis and treatment done. But again, uh, you don't have the elevator uh, with this scope. You have to pass it over guide wire and over the catheter. So in doing maneuvers and the stability is a problem in these scopes. Success rate of uh, hyalur intubation that the, uh, the, the, the rate at which the scope can be passed near the hyla or beyond the hyla is very low. In these studies, uh, one study has shown only 47%. Another study has shown only 14.5%. So it's a very, uh, you can say, a procedure which is dependent upon the person who is doing it requires very high technical expertise and uh, difficult to maintain the scope in that position to do especially therapeutics like uh, laser lithotripsy and other things very difficult next slide so uh, these are the images of uh, direct uh, peroral cholangioscopy now because this is a, a simple ultra thin endoscope you will get white light options and the narrow band imaging options you can see on the picture on the left side a tumor vessels on the orifice, uh, NBI is giving very good images. And on the right side, again, a papillary tumor is there. Uh, the white light and endoscopic images are there. So image quality is fantastic. There is no doubt about that. But again, doing a therapeutics is a problem with this scope. Next slide. So there comes uh, the cholangioscope. Uh, uh, this is a single operator uh, cholangioscope. Initially, the Spyglass Legacy, which came initially in 2007. Again, it was very cumbersome. You have had your own uh, uh, simple trolleys there, separate monitor, separate processor is there. A very fragile thing. Uh, but again, uh, it solved a lot of limitations of the previous uh, uh, cholangioscopic systems. And now we have a, a recent one is a Spy DS cholangioscopy system. Next slide. So now this is very compact, only uh, it's not a complicated system. Only two things are there. One is a digital controller, the processor part, and another is a catheter delivery system, uh, which contains uh, four way knobs are there. You can move in, uh, in four directions in the bile duct and uh, through the uh, suction and uh, uh, port, you can pass uh, the biopsy forceps or the laser to go for a laser laser trips in these patients. Next slide. So these are the evaluation you can see. Uh, you have a better uh, stability and maneuverability. Uh, you can go inside the bile duct even beyond the hyla and uh, uh, do a good diagnostic evaluation using a narrowband imaging, do spybite biopsies, uh, laser lithotripsy or EHL also. You have almost 60% wider field of view and four times image uh, resolution as compared to the older legacy system. Next slide. So now you can see uh, the various uh, performances of all. This was a recent uh, meta-analysis in endoscopy 2019, which has compared all the previous pharyngoscopes, the image quality and uh, the overall technical success rate. There are almost 20 published articles uh, they had uh, taken, uh, or close to 1,000 patients. And overall, the conclusion was that the digital uh, spy cholangioscopy, they had a better vision and overall uh, uh, treatment success rates as compared to the uh, older systems. In the next slide, you can see the image quality, the different image quality is there. The older fiber optic mother baby cholangioscopes, then you had the video uh, mother baby cholangioscopes and then the fiber. You can appreciate the difference in the image quality. And the people who had done this mother baby cholangioscope in the older days, very difficult to visualize, but now we have very good images with the recent cholangioscope systems. Next slide. 
Next slide. So these are the digital images. You can easily compare with the previous slide and the this slide. You have very good quality images. You can take good tissue diagnosis. And uh, many studies have shown that just a visual impression uh, gives a diagnosis of benign versus malignancy. Uh, along with the biopsy, it complements uh, your visual impression of being a malignant or a benign disease in these patients. Next slide. And uh, uh, this was a study uh, in uh, clinical endoscopy, which has shown uh, overall evaluation of bile duct disease, whether uh, uh, to make a diagnosis or treatment. Uh, a total of 15 referral centers, they had taken close to 300 patients and overall diagnostic uh, procedures, uh, they had altered clinical management in up to 64% patients. That's a big number. And overall procedure success rate was attained in 92% uh, patients with complete stone clearance in 71% patients. Uh, this is a procedure, uh, the slide which is showing overall uh, improved uh, diagnostic accuracy as well as treatment. You can see on the right side, close to 90% success rate in making good diagnosis. Along with that, uh, 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 the laser lithotripsy or EHL for stone clearance is almost close to 90%. And uh, uh, all these patients, they were all difficult stone disease patients, uh, which had uh, undergone a few ERCPs before doing a spike cholangioscopy. So practically they were all ERCP failure cases. And in those, you can see almost like 80 to 90% success rate in treating these patients. So I will uh, hand over the further slides and uh, uh, presentation to Dr. Mukesh Kalla, who will uh, guide you through all the indications and the types of uh, uh, treatment available with this new technology. So over to you, Dr. Mukesh Kalla. Uh, thank you so much Pankaj, for exhaustive uh, review of literature on this particular uh, methodology of uh, treating uh, malignant disorders or benign disorders or la uh, large stones inside the common bile duct. So long time back, I remember in uh, sometime around 2012, there was like a 32 year old lady who came to us with obstructive jaundice post CBD, uh, post cholecystectomy. We thought she has a stone and we went to did a ERCP. We found that there were too many clots inside and she had a deep jaundice. We placed a stent, we did a CT NGO for this patient. And uh, the radiologist said that it was uh, hemobilia, probably some kind of a pseudoneurism, which is uh, giving a blush around the common bile duct. And this patient is having hemobilia. So we requested the intervention radiologist. They did an embolization of this uh, arterial blush, which was seen in the area of common bile duct. And uh, the lucky lady recovered. We were also quite happy with our stent in common bile duct, this patient recovered. And we told her to come back after four weeks, we'll remove the stent. By then the clots would have passed out. So to our surprise, when she came back, uh, that time uh, we reviewed the situation and we did an ultrasound and on ultrasound, they were mats, liver mats. So surprisingly, then uh, when we found mats, we did a CT scan again. And this time the CT scan revealed that there was a mass at common hepatic duct, which we had this particular equipment in hand. Had we done uh, a cholangioscopy for this patient, probably she had a um, malignant lesion at common hepatic duct, which was bleeding. And uh, unfortunately, we lost a young soul. Therefore, with the advent of this new equipment, which is called spy cholangioscopy, uh, it's a milestone equipment. I would label it like this because last two years, we've been using it with around experience of around 150 patients for diagnosing the problem, for treating uh, the large CBD stones. And uh, take my word that uh, we have just had three patients who have undergone CBD exploration. We had abnormal anatomy and unfortunately, I mean, there was a broken basket inside. The rest, all kinds of stones, as long as the hepatobiliary anatomy is favorable, can be retrieved irrespective of size of stone. So I start with this subject with the indications. The indications for using a spire cholangioscopy is uh, indeterminate biliary stricture bile duct stones, which are difficult. We know what is the definition of stricture, uh, large stones, we'll talk about it. Residual stones, bile duct cancers, diagnosis, extent of tumor in malignancy of bile duct. And uh, there can be rescue procedures where we can utilize this particular uh, equipment like an impacted basket. We can use this, we can go inside with the scope, we can just break and uh, pulverize the stone and remove the basket. Unless otherwise this patient will need a CBD exploration. 
migrated stent in pancreatic duct or in common bile duct i mean when we are using a uh, normal cm we are reviewing the situation in a two dimension so we use our forceps and we sometimes we are lucky most of the time experienced people are lucky to get the stents out but sometimes we are unlucky also here it is a baby's job and cake walk we just go inside you have now beautiful accessories available from microwave if you can just there is a snare you just hold it and bring it out so so let us start this uh, subject with perioperative assessment of bilio pancreatic neoplasia a long time back the bilio pancreatic malignancies underwent whipple's disease and to our surprise when the biopsies came they were benign unfortunately patient underwent a very large mutilating procedure but now times have changed and i am sure over a period of time with multiple studies dropping in tissue diagnosis uh, having a tissue diagnosis in hand before subjecting a patient for peri uh, for whipple's disease will become a necessity so this is a wonderful study and i seek your attention to the uh, advantages of this study the surgical plan in pancreatic biliary malignancies changed in 34% of these patients this is a scientific data accumulated out of 118 patients 65% subjects had less extensive surgeries and 25% big one quarter of the patients avoided surgery so you'll appreciate that this is a milestone equipment and uh, uh, for those benign disorders which were presumed to be malignant disorder people who are undergoing uh, whipple's procedure and now we can very well uh, you know provide a precise tissue diagnosis and uh, give a surgeon the right path to operate the eligible patient only now if you see when you have a cholangioscope and you go inside this is how the tumor looks like and if you go inside a pancreatic duct this is how a uh, ipm in looks like so it is just like doing a upper gi endoscopy for ca is of agus we all know we have been doing it for such a such a long period of time the moment you enter inside you know that you are dealing with a malignancy your visual impression is usually unless would otherwise correct same is true with cholangioscope also the other use of using a cholangioscope is negotiating complex structures the complex structures where your wire is not going into the desired duct sometimes having done a procedure with contrast lying there and fear of cholangitis and we are not able to pass on a wire the cholangio uh, scope comes to our rescue if you go through this uh, particular study of guide wire placement you will appreciate that 48% patients were diagnosed as malignant structures 52% patients were post liver transplant patient and the success rate of uh, placing the guide wire in a desired duct was as good as 70% which is a big number for those situations where you need to decompress a uh, obstructed common bile duct now if you see a failed ercp for uh, this kind of a situation if you appreciate this picture you need to go inside this vessel and you're not going to go then you need a cholangioscope you go in and you appreciate there is a pinpoint opening at the anastomotic structure and you pass on a guide wire and you're able to place a stent there for post transplant biliary complications this is a great equipment to be used though we have a limited experience in this particular component of use of spyscope but review of literature suggest that anastomotic stricture is the commonest situation of post transplant situation 53% patients have anastomotic strictures few have uh, around 11% uh, and 23% have cast or stones uh, behind and all these situations can very efficiently be managed with a spy cholangioscope so this is how a uh, anastomotic stricture looks like you can pass on a guide where you can do a balloon dilatation of the strictures subsequently for those patients where normal through a normal ercp you are not able to negotiate the guide wire if you see marked bile that erythema caused by cholangitis in these patients deep ulcers sometimes happen and we are every day with newer pictures dropping in from experienced units we are getting more and more uh, uh, pictures for uh, difficult situations this is one particular use of uh, cholangioscopy treatment of difficult bile duct stones with a efficient uh, endoscopist uh, almost like 80% of the situation we are able to retrieve the stones 20% we are not able to 20% patients we are not able to retrieve the stones for situations like the stone is too big as compared to the lower bile duct or stones are very large and multiple and they are very hard to be crushed with a mechan available mechanical lithotripsy out of these 18 to 20% patients usually prior to the availability of cholangioscope 
all these patients used to land on an operating table. Uh, though we really understand very well that laparoscopic CBD exploration requires a tremendous amount of experience and the residual failure rate and leaving behind the stone is tremendously high. Single stone pickup stone lap surgery is good for CBD exploration, but you have multiple large, sto large stones. Lap surgery has its own problems. So now how do you define a difficult bile duct stone? A bile duct stone defined is a larger than 1.5 centimeter in the size, but over a period of uh, time, the new definition which came in ESG has defined CBD ratio and a stone ratio of more than one, which probably says that you can have a stone of 0.8 uh, centimeter in size 8 mm stone with a very pencil thin lower CBD. If the ratio is more than one, then this is the situation wherein we are going to call it as a difficult stone. Unusual locations like a stone lying over a stricture, a cystic duct, a Mirizi syndrome. A Mirizi syndrome, the treatment has revolutionized with the availability of cholangiscope. We're going to share with you certain images. Then unusual shape of these stones, anatomical factors, narrowing of the bile duct, distal to the stone, sigmoid shaped CBD, stone infection, shorter length of distal CBD, or acute distal CBD angulation. These are few problems where there is a difficulty in removal of the stone and we label these stones as difficult bile duct stones. So this cholangioscopy is not a new procedure. The, you, when you review the literature, you will find the uh, reference for a uh, laser lithotripsy way back in 1986, in endoscopy 1986, there was an article which said that there was a big, big stones there and they were able to remove these stones. So the thought process about uh, using laser and reaching to the common bile duct started way back 1986. <clears throat> then there were situations like a Mirizi syndrome. When you see this picture, that there is a stone which is impending on impinging the uh, common bile duct. Then there is a stricture there. You need to go in and find out. I am sure the senior endoscopist and ERCP specialist who are very experienced will be uh, after observing this kind of uh, cholangioscopic pictures will appreciate that this, these such stones are difficult to remove. When you get a stone of almost three centimeters in size, because the biggest size of uh, mechanical lithotripsy basket from most scientific or Olympus is three centimeters in size. And this is a big stone and it's very difficult to engulf the stone inside uh, that basket flower. When you go see this picture, this is even a huge stone. There's impossible way to you know uh, hold this stone and you see the lower CBD, which is again narrow. So these are difficult uh, bile duct stones. These are series of these squarish kind of stones filling up the whole common bile duct. Even if somebody wants to do a laparoscopic CBD exploration, the lower stones retrieval becomes a nightmare and there is always a possibility of leaving behind stones. Now I seek your attention to this particular study, which says that in 2016, single operator cholangioscopy in treatment of difficult bile duct stone up to 16, the success rate was 86.1%. But suddenly in 2018, we have single center as well as multi-center trials, which have given us data as good as 97.3% patients are we are able to do complete CBD clearance. This was the era when the uh, single operator spy scope was introduced. Now, efficacy of per oral cholangioscopy for difficult bile duct stone and indeterminate strictures. Now we have multiple studies dropping in about this particular modality because across the globe, people are using it extensively. Overall stone clearance rate is as high as 88%. Adverse events is 7%, as, as good as a normal ERCP. Estimated rate of these complications like pancreatitis, cholangitis, perforation, and adverse event is 2, 4, 1, and 3% respectively. If you see bile duct stone clearance rate, the pool clearance rate data is as good as 88%. If you see pooled success rate is up to 91% and recurrence rate for these stones is only 13%. Now difficult, if you get a difficult large CBD stone, our options are limited. You can do a cholangioscopy assisted laser lithotripsy or electrohydraulic lithotripsy. You can do ESWL, you can do CBD exploration, or, which can be either a laparoscopic CBD exploration or an open CBD exploration. Our concern today is, uh, I mean, discussion will be about laser lithotripsy. But a brief word about ESWL, placing a nasobiliary drain inside common bile duct, opacifying the common bile duct and doing ESWL for these patients 
uh, was useful method till the availability of cholangioscope but the problem is that liver is attached to the diaphragm respiratory movements doesn't allow us to focus the eswl beam precisely on the stone therefore the success rate of eswl was not that high when you use a cholangioscope assisted laser lithotripsy as we have discussed in previous slides the success rate is as good as 97.8% therefore to say that we can obviate need for sending this patient to a surgeon stable now what are the equipments required for a cbd clearance we need a spiracolangioscope we need a laser machine we need a cre balloon dilatation of the ampulla we need a mechanical lithotripsy device also with us now these are a few very interesting uh, accessories which are now routinely available we have a spy bite biopsy forceps we have a snare if you have a migrated stent inside the common bile duct just hold it bring it back we have a intraductal stone uh, intrahepatic uh, small stone in some peripheral duct which is giving cholangitis to these patients and we can you know this basket is very thin it goes to that place and retrieves the stone now this is uh, how it looks like it is just a plug and play equipment the good thing about this scope is that it has wheels it has wheels right upper gi or lower gi scope right left up now the movement is as good as 90 to 110 degrees it has two light sources it has a working channel and it has a dig digital ccd also there so the best thing is to you know uh, fix it there do spy bite forceps this is how spy bite forceps is done you can fix it on the shaft of your ercp scope and a single person can utilize the equipment and the procedure can be done the scope goes through the working channel of your equipment and it goes in it goes in the scope is standing right in front of the ampulla the scope goes inside the common bile duct and it can go up to a peripheral duct it can flush water it can send beautiful images outside it's a nice digital high definition images we have a working channel we can use the working channel to pass on a laser fiber or an ehl fiber we can pass on a basket we can pass on a snare and everything happens under your vision if you have cleared the cbd you can go in again and make sure and ensure that cbd is clear so this is how this is an animation video so if you have a tumor you can go take a biopsy of the tumor if you have a stone if you take a laser fiber go close to the laser fiber stay 2 mm away from the laser fiber use it break the stone and retrieve the fragments this is how this particular equipment works this is just animation for the picture uh, for the procedure which we are going to discuss and it goes through uh, the pancreatic orifice into the pd it goes way back up to the body and tail of the pancreatic duct it goes in takes biopsies and gives us precise diagnosis for the disease the patient is suffering from so along with the cholangioscope we need two more equipments which can be a laser or a electrohydraulic lithotripsy for a laser has been available for urologists for a very pretty long period of time and the hd yag laser then came a tholmium laser and a holmium laser these are pulsed wave lasers they create energy which evaporates water and the output of the generator is available up to 100 watts but for our purpose now this is very important for a gastroenterologist purpose 30 watt machine is good enough it serves most of our purpose its 100 watt is only needed for urologist for whole lap which is a prost laser prosthetic surgery we don't need it we just need a laser machine which is 30 watt laser machine now how does a laser work a pulse laser causes instantaneous fluid evaporation it induces uh, bubbles and there is oscillation of these bubbles which creates energy and this photo mechanical effect causes breakdown of the uh, stone which is in front of it now i seek your attention to these three pictures if you stay very away from the stone you don't damage it or don't break it the right time, right place is 2 mm away from the stone so you will be able to break the stone if you go very close to it then you're going to drill inside this so if you're very close then you create holes inside it the maximum fragmentation will happen 1 to 2 mm away and beyond 2 mm then your stone fragmentation will not happen so now in this long slide i seek your attention to this particular statement holmium demonstrates both the ablative effect of co2 upon direct contact with the target and coagulation effects when a slight distance from the target 
which is to say that this is a safe uh, uh, laser machine it doesn't harm your tissue at all holmium is absorbed 60 times more readily in water and making it uh, extremely safe for stone fragmentation in aqueous media and provides significant coagulation thermal effect plus minus injury so that is to say that uh, it doesn't harm your uh, uh, tissue at all just to make sure that uh, the uh, it doesn't harm we have some nice videos which are we are going to share with you because these were the problem which i did encounter when we started this procedure the cavitatory bubble as i have discussed will uh, uh, will be the energy will be transmitted to the stone and stone fragmentation will happen so if you keep adequate distance of 1 to 2 mm fragmentation will happen if you are very close then you are going to drill holes in the stone and problem will be difficult or it will be more time consuming now ehl uses a high energy it is a bipolar energy it causes a spark and then it delivers energy ehl is equally good but we have slides which uh, suggest uh, scientific studies which suggest that laser has advantage over ehl now the most important thing is ehl high energy fragmentation enhanced potential for bile duct trauma the bile duct trauma does not happen with laser but there is a potential bile duct trauma which can happen and up to 3, 3 to 15% of patient have associated morbidity with ehl that is to say that if given an option which one to use laser appears to be better as per the scientific data available as of date so now these are few slides which i just showed you which i want to share it with you so this is a hard stone mode this is the dusting mode now in vitro experimentation we done just to show to you in the test tube we have put so hard stone the breaking stone and if you see the dusting mode one to two millimeters are very well appreciate that the whole of the stone is getting fragmented into small dusting thing and the so if you see here now this is the most important slide i think why this slide is more important because what we did we took a tissue outside and we started firing it with a laser machine because we know that this is one fear that if you touch with a laser machine then you might perforate this is what all happens just slight uh, thermal injury but no perforation of the tissue happens that is to say that it is a very effective and a very safe uh, equipment to use and uh, need not get for it unless you are like aggressive you are not going to injure the cvd at all now procedure details now i am going to share with you my experience about using a cholangioscopy along with laser for cvd clearance sphincterotomy a routine sphincterotomy is required balloon dilatation introducing the cholangioscope and use of lithotripsy so sphincterotomy adequate good sphincterotomy should be done CRD dilatation should always be done in all the cases of spike cholangioscopy for three good reasons it, it reduces procedure time at large it ease of introducing the cholangioscope in common bile duct becomes easy now when i say ease of introducing of cholangioscope becomes easy it is expensive equipment and 90% of the cost of this equipment is in terminal 5 cm of the equipment so if you try to push a cholangioscope inside the ampulla which is not adequately dilated then the bending section of the spy scope gets injured and uh, uh, expensive scope you might lose in one single procedure only therefore if you do a balloon dilatation the big advantage is that the passage of the scope inside the common bile duct is very easy then the second big advantage is that having done fragmentation of the stone if you have a adequately wide open cholangios uh, 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 ampulla then even biggest fragments can be retrieved and for those stones where you are in a gray zone that you are not sure whether you need laser or not you can at least attempt sometimes so so as to say that they, it decreases the risk of residual stone large fragments can be retrieved and it reduces the procedure time for the patient therefore for all spire cholangioscopy patient adequate cri dilatation should always be done now for the having done a cri dilatation you are standing right in front of the ampulla which is wide open your assistant assistant has given you a cholangioscope what all you need to see you need to see kindly check the setting of equipment water flushing pump this particular equipment 
comes with a suction channel it comes with the flushing channel so you have to get a low flushing water pump which keeps on flushing water which adequately distends the common bile duct providing adequate visualization a slow suction pump should always be there so the fragments of the dusting mode which is happening should easily come out knob movement should be checked light should be checked wire placement depends on your cholangiogram say for example if you are doing a mirizi then you need to place your wire inside a cystic duct or the adequate placement of wire is done and over the wire in the beginning always place a spy scope over the wire trying to place a spy scope without a wire in the beginning of the procedure will create a problem it will might give stress to the bending section of the uh, the cholangioscope and you might injure your cholangioscope so if you want to utilize your cholangioscope properly in that case the best way to do it is by using it over the wire and please do not use elevator please do not use elevator because elevator is enemy presuming that your bending section is in the elevator channel and if you have picked it up and if you elevated the uh, uh, elevator then you might injure it therefore try to use the knobs and try to use up down knob to send your uh, cholangioscope inside the common bile duct once you are inside the common bile duct please flush the common bile duct see there is one important uh, carry home thing here which you should mention uh, remember that after taking a uh, contrast after flushing contrast into the common bile duct the contrast is a high osmolality high osmolality uh, liquid so the visibility through a contrast is poor and visibility through water is better therefore when you having placed your scope into a desired place flush water make sure that contrast is flushed out you will two big advantages you will save your scope the contrast which gets sucked inside the cholangioscope goes and uh, gets deposited and it uh, the working channel of the cholangioscope gets into problem therefore make sure that the uh, the contrast doesn't go there over the wire place it in flush the cbd for a better visualization correlate with the available cholangiogram and mrcp report if you have that the desired where is the desired stone and which stone you want to challenge first now this is just a video this how it works so you know the stone is right in front of you this kind of muck which you saw if you flush it properly then this kind of muck will not be there the laser fiber should stay just 2 mm away and you keep on firing while you are yeah, while you are firing you will see the fragmentation of the stone happening the suction of the ercp scope should stay on because it will keep taking it out the stone gets fragmented it takes hardly uh, 15 to 20 minutes for even a bigger 2.5 cm stone to get fragmented this is how the procedure happens so we keep fragmenting the stones and once you have fragmented then you take a cholangiogram again if the stones are not large and if your cri dilatation is adequate you can use a trapezoid basket to retrieve the fragments and if uh, no fragments are there the job is appears to be have done now about laser equipment in laser equipment you have three kinds of setting one is a hard stone mode of fragmentation mode second is a dusting mode and third is a called a ablation mode so when you start using the equipment make sure that your room has adequate uh, cooling because see the it creates in a uh, heat and if your temperature goes above 35 degrees the laser machine goes down so make sure that you have a temperature uh, thermometer in your digital thermometer in your endoscopy room try to keep temperature around 28 degrees beyond if it goes above 34 35 laser equipments efficiency goes down drastically for the setting we will talk much in detail about this uh, mode there is a hard stone mode of fragmentation dusting mode and ablation mode now we come with three kind of fibers 200 micron 272 micron and 365 microns now the kind of energy which is required to be delivered for fragmentation of the stone depends on the kind of stone you are dealing with if you have a very hard marble like stone you need a higher voltage so what is higher voltage how does it happen the joule into frequency becomes watt so you if you increase joule the frequency goes down if you increase frequency joules go down but you have to maintain a watt so if you are using a 200 micron uh, fiber laser fiber the maximum uh, wattage which it can bear is 15 watt otherwise it will blast and you lose a expensive fiber 
272 micron fiber will start, stay up to 20 watts. 365 micron fiber will uh, utilize energy, transmit energy up to 25 watts. Now, <clears throat> the stone is right in front of you as we just saw in the video. So what next you need to do? Don't touch the stone. Do a paint and brush technique. Paint and brush technique would mean that you either with your body movements or the right left knob, which is there on the spire cholangioscope, keep on moving and like your painting. And this brush will keep on eroding the stone in a dusting mode. There is a pilot beam, a green color light. Wherever the light goes and where the light falls is the area where the stone is going to get or the energy is going to get delivered. So you do paint and brushing and stone gets uh, disintegrated in a slow paced manner and stone size keeps on decreasing. The flushing of water keeps on uh, removing the dust which you have created. But remember one important thing that this should be done underwater. If you fire a laser machine without a fiber, then uh, without underwater, then it will not work. Large rounded mobile stones with dusting technique. Single large hard stone. Initially do a fragmentation with the hard stone mode. Having done fragmentation, go inside and start using the dusting mode. And this dusting mode is going to uh, make the stone small, too small to be taken out easily. Now there are certain important things which are outside in the duodenum, which also you have to pay attention to the screen, the PIP screen, which is showing your ERCP image. A lot of because you are irrigating the common bile duct to clear the uh, fragmented stones, so it's all going to accumulate in the uh, duodenum. We are doing these procedures in the propofol anesthesia in a left lateral position. So over a period of time, what happens that if the procedure has gone long or if you're dealing with a large stone, a lot, of fire, a lot of water gets accumulated in the stomach and there's a risk of aspiration. So keep air insufflation as low as possible and keep aspirating the water which comes after flushing through the common bile duct. Adequate suction of duodenal content is very important. Having cleared the stone under vision, do a cholangiogram again. If stones are not big enough, you can remove them by a simple basket or a balloon. Then you can reintroduce the cholangioscope and ensure that CBT is clear. Normally, we place a stent. We call these patients back after two weeks and ensure that the CBT is clear and then we send them home. Now, the second big use of this uh, particular modality is tissue diagnosis. As I had shown you in earlier study, 25% of patients of suspected biliary malignancies do not need surgery. I underline this statement. One fourth of patients of biliary malignancies do not need surgery. This is scientific data. And this particular equipment helps you to diagnose this problem. Now, if you see, this is a, in, this is a stricture. And if you take your cholangioscope inside, you keep going inside, you find this kind, this is an old image of uh, scope so the picture is not that clear you take your uh, you've seen the place the spy bite forcep comes in the pip image is showing the duodenal picture where the spy scope is going through the ampulla in the spy bite goes in takes a biopsy and brings brings out the biopsy forcep and along with this a tissue comes from the bottom of your common bile duct giving you a diagnosis of the disease this is how a spy bite forcep works. Now, how to do a tissue diagnosis with a diagnostic cholangioscopy? Sphincterotomy is a must, so that ease of moving the cholangioscope inside and outside the ampulla is easy. You can do a water or a suit to insufflation to keep it patent and give you good image. Spy bite forcep can give you image. Now, the tissue which comes out is a small tissue. You need to preserve this tissue properly. So you need to get a proper kind of a blotting paper from your lab, mount it properly and keep it properly in a small test tubes so that the technician who's going to do a block making and tissue cutting shouldn't lose this expensive and hard earned tissue which you obtain from inside of the common bile duct. Now, 30 to 24% patients referred for surgery with suspicion of malignancy have benign disease. This is what I was trying to quote. For these patients, if they undergo hepaticojejunostomy or if they undergo extensive hepatectomies or if they undergo whipples, it is injustice. Technology has given us a reason to give surgeon an absolutely clean picture where to operate and where not to operate. 
Aggressive surgery for benign and delay for malignancy should also be avoided. Now, the cholangioscopic findings suggestive of malignancy can be tumor vessels, dilated tortuous vessels, infiltrative strictures, irregular margin, occlusion of the lumen, irregular surface. So we have classifications available for this. So this is a malignant stricture on a cholangiogram. And when you go inside, this is nodularity. What you see, this is called a malignant stricture. And this is a post cholecystectomy bile duct injury, which is a smooth fibrotic kind of a narrowing, which is a benign stricture. This is how it looks like. Now, this is a, it can be a filling defect of a submucosal lesion, which on a cholangiogram looks like this. But when you go inside, it looks like this, and you can take biopsies and confirm it. Now, we have an Ecuador classification, which helps us to interpret our images and inter-observer inter variation about this particular uh, picture which you have obtained by doing a cholangioscopy is minimized so that there is no diagnostic dilemma and whatever suggestions you give or whatever impressions you give to the patients are correct. So they divide it into type 1, 2, 3 as a non-neoplastic lesion. The non-neoplastic plastic lesion, villus pattern, polypoidal pattern, inflammatory pattern, fibrous congestive pattern, we'll show you pictures for this. And new plastic lesions can be of four types. So this is how it looks like. So non-new plastic will be uh, image like this. Then you can have a villi kind of a situation, or then you can have a uh, uh, your type two A looks like this. Type two B looks like, and type three is a striated pattern. Now for new plastic lesion, new vascularization is the bottom line, which you need to carefully observe, take pictures, and share it with your colleagues along with the biopsy and so as to minimize inter-observer variation. There was a good agreement amongst observers, higher with experts than with non-experts. Now, FV classification for cholangioscopic findings for tumors inside the common bile duct. I mean, 30 biopsy specimen from 11 patients with bile duct cancer and original classification, biliary surface form and vessel structure. If you combine these two things together, then you find a data which classically predicts whether you're dealing with a malignant lesion or you're dealing with a benign lesion. So F factor means that it is flat like this, granular like this, and papillary like this, or nodular like this. And when you go to V factor, then if you see the vascularity, there is a network of vessels V1. There are irregular undilated vessels like V2 and irregularly dilated torch of cell is V3. So when you combine these two data, then what you find when you join V and F, then this is an area, the black circle is the malignancy. So higher the V pattern and higher the F pattern predicts the probability of having a malignancy and it correlates very well with the biopsy reports, histopathology reports, and it also correlates very well with genetic mutations as well. Now, this is further to emphasize that the FV classification is extremely good for diagnosing this particular problem. Now, there to contribute uh, the scientific data on these uh, particular things, you will appreciate that the sensitivity and specificity for the single operator defining bile structures has gone up to 90 to 95%. Thank you so much for patient listening. I'll be pleased to share my information with you if you have any queries on this regard. Thanks a lot. Over to Dr. Raisa. Thank you, uh, Bokeshi, for an excellent uh, overview and uh, demonstration of various lesions and uh, how to approach difficult situations. Uh, I think uh, uh, you have to be very patient, that, as you have just mentioned, that you need to have patience in evaluating the lesions and then to approach the whole problem. Um, there is a question which has come for uh, discussion. Uh, if the stone you pull it down into the lower CBD, it gets stuck. How do you proceed further? Uh, see, normally in cholangioscopy, we don't pull patients down. I presume that your particular question is in a routine ERCP while managing a ERCP, if you pull down a stone and you get impacted at the ample of waiter, then, right. there is a, then either using, if it is impacted in a basket, then you have to, you know, uh, push the basket back to common empathic duct and try to uh, release the basket and leave the stone there and come back because probably the CBD and stone ratio is more than one. You will not be able to retrieve unless you break it into pieces. 
if it was a balloon which brought it down then you have to bring the balloon out you have to replace the balloon or flush water to send it back to common hepatic duct so is it possible to uh, push it up into the uh, common mm-hmm. duct and then do it yes sir uh, which type of water do you use means you use saline or you use distilled water or sir normally uh, in our particular situation we are using simple ro water which is uh, with low tds so that it doesn't bother our instruments at all that's good um, another important thing is you clearly mentioned that ehl and laser are two techniques which are available right sir so out of these uh, which is most commonly used now uh, ehl is it good or uh, laser is good the scientific data as of now available is more with laser lithotripsy overall the cost of the equipment is also low with laser lithotripsy you have to understand that one fiber of laser comes for 40000 rupees and it will last at least if not it some 70 days for ehl for electrohydraulic lithotripsy the cost is higher moreover the irrespective of the cost ehl has a problem that it causes tissue injury which laser does not that's a very important thing that tissue injury has to be how uh, in laser you have tried to explain as to how to avoid uh, what the our uh, uh, viewers and colleagues would you like to explain that under what you are doing how you do you keep your uh, laser beam right in direction yeah sir this laser beam has a pilot beam in front of it so this is a green color dot which appears like we are using a laser marker for our presentation similar to that there is a pilot beam you just have to keep the pilot beam on the stone and the right and left knob of the uh, either a collingoscope or your body movements you can use it to do a paint and brush kind of a movement of the pilot beam on the stone and keep your uh, pedal on for uh, lithotripsy so it will start breaking inadvertently even if there is small firing on the common bile duct also it usually doesn't uh, harm unless like i mean you keep on firing on the bile duct only we have done it on a in vitro situation also before starting the procedure long time back in year 2018 mid when we thought of starting this i was quite afraid that uh, in our process of breaking the stones what if we injure the common bile duct it will be a catastrophe so we did in vitro experiments and today i showed you a video also which really clearly demonstrates you stand on the pedal and push in there is only a scarring on the uh, mucosa of the uh, bile duct it doesn't perforate it so you be aware that uh, your you okay. stay on uh, the stone don't uh, go towards the bile duct even if there are few shots fired on the bile duct also it won't really matter it really does not matter uh, you have really very clearly shown the various uh, images as to uh, f and v images and you have tried to uh, say that the sensitivity and specificity and uh, what about the inter observer variations you have mentioned that it is low, low but how how often it is occurring sir the intention of uh, bringing in the two ecuador classification and fv classification was primarily meant for this purpose only that inter observer variation should go down so with fv classification the histopathology prediction and genetic mutation prediction correlates very well and the big advantage is that inter observer variation is also not very high i think it's very important thing that uh, uh, with the newer techniques and uh, the way the classification has been made you can achieve a very high accuracy in making the diagnosis and you rightly mentioned that uh, almost about 25% of uh, uh, surgeries can be avoided if you take the tc acquisition and uh, uh, try to see the lesion which is there uh, in your clinical op- uh, opinions as to you have been doing almost about 150 patients you have done uh, what was the biggest size of the stone which you could break it so we showed you a picture there with the biggest size of the stone was almost 4 cm in length and around 2.5 cm wide so it took us around 2 uh, hours to you know break it and even on the second sitting these few fragments were left behind which we was uh, we uh, brought them back with a trapezoid basket but in second sitting it took us hardly 20 to 25 minutes to clear the cvd completely 
but this was the biggest size of stone which we were able to retrieve from the common bad luck and one important thing i want to share with you sir the biggest misconception about uh, collinger laser uh, collingoscopy assisted laser lithotripsy for uh, cbd stone is that it is a expensive procedure in our particular practice it is not expensive procedure because except for the capital investment which you primarily need to establish this equipment the cost of a laser fiber is approximately 400 rupees because one fiber would last a good 70 80 patients and one fiber will cost you around 40000 rupees and it is this fiber is 4 meters long then for collingoscope again i would say that if you are using it very carefully and that have, that is true for all the scopes which you are using you can reuse it also for diagnostic use we are using it at least 8 to 10 times and for therapeutic use we are able to use it at least 5 to 6 times per scope which brings down our cost to uh, around 25000 rupees for the scope and maybe like uh, uh, some 1000 rupees for the uh, fiber and if i take into account the uh, capital cost also maximum at the most uh, 30000 rupees to the patient beyond this beyond this the most important thing sir here for uh, collingoscopy is that even if you send this patient for uh, cbd exploration may it be a lab cbd exploration or open cbd exploration it is 7 days in hospital in any kind of city in, in our country or in any kind of situation the 60 70000 rupees cost is always there with 6 to 7 days of hospitalization here we are able to send the patient home the same day i think the message is so clear that uh, this technology brings us as endo surgeons and uh, for the patient it is a boon that he is out next day with his uh, cbd cleared and uh, uh, most of the situations you need not to go again because you have cleared you have visualized the whole thing there is no stones left inside and uh, uh, you have done the whole procedure in a nutshell maximum time is 2 hours that uh, and in a in a surgical procedure so much of trauma is to the uh, patient and to the uh, the family and the cost also is higher than and you have very clearly analyzed as to how the total cost is going to come and maximum would be 40000 rupees this is still about uh, uh, and then uh, the chances of uh, uh, morbidity is less the most important thing is the patient uh, uh, relief and as as well as uh, trauma to the patient is important and i think uh, surgical trauma is a bigger trauma as compared to the endo surgeon's trauma uh, pankaj the issue has been so dealt uh, very well by you that you took us the, through the journey and uh, we are highly thankful to you for elaborating and dr mukesh for clearing the whole issue of uh, uh, collingoscopy a new technology in the armamentarium of uh, uh, endoscopists that we are now turning into surgeons also and doing the benefit to the patients uh, thank you very much uh, mukesh and dr uh, pankaj for a excellent talk and we are looking forward to the next week that how we approach a darker area that is a small bowel which was probably not accessible and uh, now we'll be able to see the new technology as to how to approach and uh, to diagnostic as well as most important is more therapeutic procedures can be done uh, with the pankaj uh, taking over us uh, to the new technology of uh, small bowel endoscopy thank you very much to both of you for excellent presentation thank you sir thank you, uh, thank you so much sir thank you uh, so uh, thank you everyone and uh, thank you dr pankaj simal and th uh, thank you dr mukesh kalla for the detailed presentation and i think lucid explanation with all the video uh, regarding the spf collingoscopy uh, and uh, i thank uh, dr rai sir for this uh, wonderfully uh, moderating this question and answer session uh, we will also like to thank all the clinicians for sparing your valuable time and joining us for this online cm program i hope all of you have enjoyed this program if you like this session please let us know in the comment box uh, now here today is the end of this program this is the second iteration of this uh, webinar series and uh, uh, we'll be also having a third uh, series on the same program uh, and we'll wait for you on the same program as well 
so thank you once again everyone this is the end of this webinar have a good day thank you thank you bye thank you thank you mukesh bye thank you sir how to leave